Uh, today we're joined by Topher Stevenson, Head of Operations at Aspire Commercial. Topher is at the forefront of driving marketing strategy and operations in commercial real estate. At Aspire, he's also pioneering AI, their AI consulting division focused on leveraging technologies to improve commercial real estate workflows. Welcome, Topher. We're excited to have you join us today. Thanks so much for having me, guys. I really appreciate it and uh, looking forward to having a fun chat. Yeah, I'm excited to, to speak with you again. You gave this great presentation at the CREI Summit, and uh, I just really resonated with a lot of what you said. And I was excited to see that you used a lot of the tools uh, that n many commercial real estate people don't really know about. Uh, Midjourney, for example, is one of our favorite tools that we use sure. uh, kind of daily. And what what really prompted you uh, with AI? How did you get really integrated into AI? What was the story there that started you off? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think I started getting really curious about AI, you know, around two years ago, probably the same time a lot of other people did, you know, just kind of with the advent of ChatGPT rolling out. Uh, I did get an MBA in business analytics. And so, you know, I kind of had some exposure to data science and, you know, different platforms that you can use for, you know, different types of AI use cases, but not really the ones that were super common for everyday commercial real estate people. You know, your, your giant groups of, your, of the world, the CBREs, the JLLs, they're probably using a lot of that stuff. But when it comes down to just kind of, you know, smaller brokers, mid-tier brokerage shops, you know, kind of commercial real estate owners, you know, there's a fairly limited number of people in the industry that are able to leverage AI and data science in that way. You know, it's just not super common in our industry. Right. So I think I got really, really excited when I found ChatGPT, like a lot of other people did, just because, you know, I've been in commercial real estate for a, over a decade now. And yeah, I've been in a variety of different positions, you know, kind of marketing direction, you know, deal making and house sales and leasing uh, brokerage operations. And a key piece of my role has always been just, you know, solving everyday commercial real estate problems using technology. And, you know, there's different kinds of ways to do that. I, I think in commercial real estate, it's often revolving around, you know, there's only so much tech that's kind of dedicated for commercial real estate. So it's kind of taking other things that work in other industries and trying to figure out how to apply it to commercial real estate. And when I saw ChatGPT, I was just like, this is it. You know, this is something everybody's going to be able to use for so many different things and in so many different ways. And so, you know, the more I got uh, interested in ChatGPT and started leveraging it, you know, shortly after all these, you know, hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of AI tools started rolling out. And as you know, on social media, the more you interact with things, the more you start getting different kinds of posts. So just every day it was like, here's the top 100 tools you should be using in AI. And I was just like, these can't all be good tools. They can't be just hundreds and hundreds that are like really <laughs> effective, you know? So I just started anytime I would see one. Uh, that seemed meaningful, I would take it and just try to test case it and see, okay, you know, how can we actually apply this to commercial real estate? And a lot of them were, were, were silly. It's like, okay, this is an AI tool that uh, takes a tweet and turns it into an email. It's like, okay, I don't see a lot of use for that, you know, on a day to day basis. <laughs> but, the, you know, the more you start testing different ones out, the more you can see that okay, this is something that's going to be really good for marketing or, you know, this is something that's going to be for mar good for marketing a property. This is something that's going to be really good for marketing our brand. This is something that is going to, you know, help me do better research, you know, and be able to do better due diligence on deals that I'm considering. Um, you know, so there's just a lot of different use cases that I think really started unfolding once chat GPT rolled out and once people started creating these tools. So I'm just doing my best to kind of catch the ones that I think are going to be useful and uh, figure out how to apply them to CRE. So I really like what you said about um, everyday use for the tools, because I feel like that is one of the things that, that separates people who use AI a lot versus those who, who don't is I feel like your reaction to that tweet email tool, which I agree, like, what are you gonna use that for, right? But um, when it comes to ChatGPT, some people have that same reaction. 
And so what are some ways that you use AI tools every day? For example, ChatGPT um, that other people might be missing or might not be seeing. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think the ways that I use ChatGPT every day are not necessarily even always specific to commercial real estate. It's just kind of my problem solving tool, you know, um, and there's just a million different ways to use it that are just kind of business uses that I just happen to be using it for because I'm in commercial real estate. So it could be, you know, as simple as, hey, uh, I'm trying to do this. Um, I'm trying to customize something on HubSpot. You know, it's the CRM platform that we're rolling out. I'm stuck. I've hit a roadblock. I need you to be my HubSpot advisor. I'm going to ask you questions on how to do things. You're going to provide me answers based on what you know. And if you don't know the answer, you're going to search the internet and find it. And you can very quickly use, you know, probably any LLM out there that's good at accessing the internet to quickly troubleshoot and just kind of work your way through different problems. And those could be just problems in everyday life, or they could be problems with, you know, legitimate, uh, you know, technology that you're trying to work through. So it could be something as simple as that, something a little bit more nitty gritty. You know, when I first started at Aspire, you know, week one, I was down in Houston, Texas, and I just had one on one meetings with every single person in the company. And I was like, OK, you know, this is a young company. Um, we don't necessarily have all of our processes nailed down. We have to do that. So let's start by learning what everyone's currently doing. So I just said, okay, from top to bottom, you know, uh, indicate the steps that you're taking to execute this process. If I had questions, if it seemed like there was a gap, you know, I'd chime in and be like, well, what happens if this happens? We would get all of that recorded, you know, with an AI note taker. And then I would dump that into chat GPT 01, which is fantastic, by the way. Um, and I would ask it a couple of key things, you know, like outline all of the processes that we went over with uh, this particular person, outline the steps for each process um, and outline any recommendations or you know places where you think there's gaps in the process. Then as I did that with everybody in the company, I was then able to ask it, OK, identify confusion across these processes, identify places where someone thinks one person is doing something but in reality, it's this other person doing it over here because those are the things that we need to clarify. And then kind of switching gears, I was able to use it in a very similar way and say, OK, we're now going to roll out these processes and be able to track them in a project management software. It's going to be Monday.com. So walk me through step by step, you know, how you think I should group these different processes, which, what types of automation should we fire off? and tell me exactly you know how i can set that up um so again it's like there's a lot of different ways to use it it just kind of depends on what's on your plate at any given point in time that is a fantastic way to, to use this technology and it hadn't occurred to me but someone in your with your background and your expertise you saw that creative use of the tool and and that's what a lot of people just really don't get these things are just tools you, there's no need to be scared of them they're just tools mm -hmm. they're a new tool yeah. let's jump on them so i think that was a fantastic creative use to and it's really <laughs> it's making me think about some of the processes that i do in my own work and going oh where can i uh, shore up some of the deficiencies in in what I do, especially now that I I recently hired on a VA. What are, what are the processes that I need to work with with her uh, sure. to to function better? So, thank you for that fantastic idea. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And I, you know, I think if if people are scared about using it and they don't necessarily know where to start, it's like again, just think of something that you maybe are doing for the first time that you don't have a clear roadmap for how to do you know you can describe that to chat gpt01 and get a very clear you know direction on at least a path that you could take very quickly you know so if you just don't know where to start with something you kind of need to brainstorm you know you, you want to get started but you don't know how you you can ask it for feedback on that and it will at least give you ideas on how you can execute a new project so again, it's not necessarily commercial real estate specific, um, but it's just very helpful. You know, it enables you to, if you're stuck, if you hit a roadblock, you don't know the way around it, you know, all of a sudden you have something that you can kind of brainstorm with to try to get unstuck.
Um, or if it's just something that you know is going to take a lot of time, it's something that you can probably take a lot, of, you know, take a lot of that time and give it back to you. You know, like writing out all of those process documents myself would have been very, very time consuming. Listening to all the recordings and doing it would have been very time consuming. Taking the notes manually, you know, would have been very time consuming. But instead, recorded it, got a transcription using AI, fed that into AI, got the process output. And obviously, I read it through to make sure it was all correct. And, I, you know, there were some things that were incorrect that I had to, uh, you know, make those corrections. But it all happened much faster than if I was doing everything manually. That's, that tends to be true. One of my questions for you is this, because when I find people who are excited about using AI and who use it, I, I think a lot of people see, they look at AI and they see end of the world, job destroyer. But I know that a lot of people look at it and say job enhancer. Uh, it has made me more competent. It had that opportunity. I like how you said earlier, it helps you problem solve. So how do you get into that mindset where you look at it and say, I'm going to solve a problem with this just in my day to day? Because some people um, that I've spoken with, they seem a little surprised when I tell them the minute I found ChatGPT, I've used it pretty much every day. And they're like, for what? Uh, but I found that it is a very good problem solving tool generally. And so I just kind of, if you could give us a little bit of your insight as to when does it occur to you when you approach a problem? Oh, you know what would be great for this? An AI tool like ChatGPT. So how do, how do you get, get into that habit kind of mentally or that headspace to say, I'm going to solve this problem and I'm going to have my artificial intelligent friend help me? That is a no, that is a good question. I mean, it all comes down to habit, right? I, I think in order to form the habit, you need to realize the value of doing it. And so, you know, once you realize the value of doing it, you're just going to have that chat GPT tab open all day. <laughs> yeah. And as things yeah, come yeah. up, you're just pretty much firing things into it. <laughs> um, you know, but the other thing is, you know, kind of recognizing the right tool for the job, you know, so I was giving a presentation to a uh, private uh, multifamily ownership group yesterday. And I was telling them about perplexity, you know, which I'm sure you guys have used perplexity before. And, you know, it's just such a fantastic tool for doing types of, you know, and really any type of research. But, you know, it's a really good tool for finding uh, property information that could be uh, accessible via the internet. And, you know, market intel that would be accessible via the Internet. You know, it's going to scrape in things from different news stories, from uh, different market reports. And it can ask you your question, answer your questions about market research and property research very quickly. And so their question was, OK, well, so like ChatGPT can access the Internet now. Um, why wouldn't I just use it for that? And so, you know, part of it is building the habit. It's like if you're not going to get in the habit of using both. It's like, fine. Yeah, just start with that habit of having chat GPT open and leveraging AI on a regular basis. But once you get into the habit of, you know, you're leveraging AI on a regular basis, then you can kind of focus more into what's the right tool for the job. You know, is it chat GPT, which is a very good kind of multi-purpose, you know, general AI tool? Or is it something like perplexity that is literally built to search the Internet? leveraging AI. You know what I mean? So it's like once you kind of build the initial habit of, okay, something comes up, I'm going to think of a way to solve this using AI, then you can kind of start thinking of, okay, well, what's the actual correct tool that I should be using for this problem? Uh, per perplexity is a really interesting tool. And, and like you said, it's focused on doing the research rather than that general uh, LLM tool, which, you know, will take anything. Perplexity is definitely more refined and focused and highly recommend it for any kind of research project uh, if you're trying to do that particular thing. And it's, it kind of reminds me of, of what my brother and I talk about when we're talking about prompts is specificity. And when you give a ChatGPT specific instructions, it's going to do a lot better. And so what it sounds like perplexity has done is they've taken the LLMs that are available and really fine tuned it and honed it to that specific purpose of research and analyzing data. Uh, what I know you, you are a fan of ChatGPT, obviously you've talked about it quite a bit. Are there any other uh, LLMs that are similar to ChatGPT that you use in your work? 
Yeah, you know, so it's interesting. I generally default to ChatGPT again, again because it's kind of that multi-purpose tool. I am experimenting with Claude. You know, it uh, it does seem like a fantastic tool. Um, it's you know, word on the street and kind of everyone I talk to about it says you know, generally if, if you're going to be using something for you know helping with coding, you know, it's going to be substantially better for that. Um, if you want to do something that involves, you know, some sort of data analysis, it's typically going to be better for that as well. Um, you know, those kinds of use cases aren't necessarily, you know, ones that I'm doing on a very ongoing basis, you know, so I'm still kind of trying to get a feel for it. You know, I know what other people are using it for that it's better for, but what is it better for, for me? You know, and honestly, I'm still trying to figure that out. So sometimes I will just flip back and forth and ask something of ChatGPT, you know, see what kind of output it gives me and uh, then try the same thing in Claude, you know, and see what kind of output it gives me just to see, you know, again, the routine things that I'm doing very regularly, you know, what works better in each LLM. But I do, you know, another reason that I, sorry to cut you off. Um, another reason that I'm, I'm uh, you know, bullish on ChatGPT and that, you know, I usually default to ChatGPT is the ability to create custom GPTs. Um, and I know we've we've talked about this a little bit before, Warren, but... Um, I was just about to ask you about that. I, you know, I, I just think they're such a fantastic way to leverage AI because, you know, like you said, like so many people are, you know, maybe scared of AI or if they're not scared, they just don't necessarily know how to use it or they're not going to use it so much that they're going to be, you know, like a professional chat GPT prompting machine. You know, just some people are never going to get enough reps in that they're going to be really good at that. And so what I love about custom GPTs is like, if you find something that you can do and save a lot of time with through custom, through a chat GPT, you can create instructions around that task and feed it into the back end of uh, a custom GPT. And then, you know, you can make these instructions so specific that when someone gets to that custom GPT, they don't have to know how to type in a fantastic prompt to get ChatGPT to do something. All those instructions are already baked into the back end, you know? So if you know that ChatGPT is really good at giving you summaries of a specific lease based off of, you know, specific things that you want to see taken out of that lease, you can create a custom GPT that already knows it's supposed to find those things from each of these leases that it give, that you give it. So, you know, if you try to roll that out to your team, you don't have to worry about your team becoming an expert in typing a two paragraph prompt that's going to rip out all of these things from your lease. The GPT already knows how to do that. So someone from your team can just upload the lease they don't have to say anything at all. You know, ChatGPT is just going to give you the output. So that that's part of the reason I'm so bullish on custom GPTs. I know you can make similar things with Google Gemini, and I think they're starting to do that with Claude projects. But, you know, ChatGPT is just so simple to do it with that even though, you know, like I'm not a program developer, but I'm able to go in and make custom GPTs just because I can write really good prompts and I can extrapolate those prompts into different types of instructions and get them to do things very consistently. Would you mind sharing some of your custom GPTs or what you do with them and, and, and how you're using them? Yeah, so this is one that I've made. Um, and the reason I wanted to make this one is it just seemed like this is where everyone was going to immediately default to for chat GPT. It's like, okay, well, what's one thing we can definitely use it for writing property <laughs> descriptions. You know, it seems like everyone was able to kind right. of wrap their mind around that, <laughs> you know, fairly quickly. So I said, okay, how can we do that? How can we make it easy for people? And then how can we take it a step further? So what I've done with real estate writer pro is I'm going to tell it, write a property description for 341 4th Street, uh, 11 unit mixed use uh, brick investment property, downtown Portland, Maine. Uh, we're gonna say fully occupied, nine apartments and two retail units. Here's a photo of the building in the lower bottom. 
And so what I'm going to do is, sorry, I should have had this slightly more teed up. I'm going to oh, drop. You're fine. You're fine. I'm going to drop fantastic. in this photo, and. So I'm assuming the GPT you programmed it to take those parameters and then it's supposed to generate, like we were talking earlier about the specificity of the instructions. And one of the cool things about a custom GPT is you can give it very specific instructions as a shorthand and it's really great. And it exactly. Like that's kind of what you're doing. Yeah. And so, you know, in theory, I've given this GPT instructions in the back end that tell it, okay, someone's going to come to you and they're going to want you to write a property description. So they're going to give you a handful of details about the property. Uh, maybe they'll give you a photo of the property. And your job is to take those handful of details that they gave you, extrapolate any additional details that you can find from the photo that they're uploading because again you know ChatGPT can analyze photos now and then you know just scour the internet for any other you know relevant information that you can find to put together a really robust property description and so obviously i had to give it a little text i probably didn't need to tell it to write a property description um, but you need to give it just a handful of bullet points about the property you give it the address you give it a photo and it can do a lot with very limited information. And so, you know, if this wasn't a custom GPT, there's much more I would have had to say here. I would have said, okay, I need you to scrape the internet for more information. Here's, you know, the kind of things that you should be looking for in order to incorporate them into a property description. But instead I just give it a handful of details and it kind of does the rest for you. So then you can take this one step further. You can say, Okay, here's a marketing package that I really like. Please draft the brochure from top to bottom based on this example. And so the second oh, set nice. of instructions that I gave it in the back That's end is fantastic. that. Yeah, you know, you're going, so you're basically, you're going to take a property description, but like this is a very big meaty property description. Someone probably wouldn't be using something with quite this much substance. So this enables you to take all that information and then you know break it up into brochure copy based on how it would normally appear you know in uh, whatever template that you're giving it. So this one came out. That's you fantastic. Know, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. You know, so it's just a way to save people a lot of time. You know, again, it's you know I just think it's fascinating in the commercial real estate industry. No one seems to want to take on the job of writing property descriptions. It's like so required for every single property, but it's like the, the brokers are like, that's the operations It's like the last thing anybody job. wants yeah, to do. Yeah, they, they should be doing that. And the operations team is like, how, how am I going to do it? I don't know anything about this property. You're the broker. You know, so it's just this thing that kind of gets passed around. But <laughs> now, you know, now it can just be done through AI. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I, I was kind of curious whether or not people would find it helpful or not. But at this point, it's a public GPT. I've posted a little bit about it on social media, and uh, I think it's been used uh, right around 1,700 times at this point. So, you know, it's not it's it's not an app that uh, is, you know getting a billion subscribers or anything like that, but you know, it's getting used by people in the industry on a regular basis, which is cool. Do you find yourself making custom GPTs just for your own use? Yeah, absolutely, and. Um, you know, again, it kind of comes down to the right tool for the job, you know, like something that I used to do a lot of, I haven't been doing as much of it uh, at Aspire yet, because I just got started, but uh, writing SEO content, you know, so there's a lot of different ways that, you know, with a really good prompt, you could tell ChatGPT, hey, uh, here's an article from another website that is ranking very, very well. Um, here's an article or, you know, here's some information for which we want to write a very similar article that we want to rank for the same keywords. Here's a list of keywords that we want to rank for draft, you know, not write because you're going to want to put, you know, your own spin on it, edit it and everything, but draft me, you know, a copy of an article for us using our bullet points and our information that is a very similar structure is incorporating the keywords in a very similar way that will ideally, you know, rank for those same keywords. And, you know, I've, I have a prompt that I, you know, tested 18 different ways for like a full day until I kind of got the magic sauce. And now it's very capable of saying, okay, here's a link, here's our bullet points, here's the keywords we want to rank for, go do your thing. 
for whatever reason, that particular use case has been difficult to translate into a custom GPT. So again, right tool for the job. Anytime I want to do that, I do just take that prompt and you know I'm able to execute that. If we wanted to, we could make a custom GPT that is good enough, you know, so that someone could easily do that through a custom GPT. And then maybe they send it to me and I kind of get it to, you know, the 10 yard line using the prompt. Um, but again, it's just depending on the use case. Custom GPTs, you generally want them to be kind of simple. Because again, the idea is like you want them to execute a very specific task. So in general, the more complex that you make the instructions, you know, the more difficult it's going to be to get a consistent output. But again, if it's something similar, like, hey, here's a lease, we want this information from the lease, that's a very simple set of instructions, and it's going to be able to do that consistently pretty pretty well every time. I was going to say that that's a fantastic use case. I had a broker reach out to me asking for the same thing. How can I get, he had... I don't know, like 40 documents and he needed specific information from each of the 40. And he contacted me and said, how can I do this with ChatGPT? And I said, well, it'll take all those PDFs, look at it. And I sent him a prompt that said, you know, extract this information and then set it in a markdown table in this fashion with this many columns and this, these, and put this information this way. And so it did that. And so I, your use of chat, of custom GPTs is amazing, and and I love that you really focus and hone in on those things and uh, and make those available to other people so that they can test those waters because you know sometimes they have a little bit of fear or they're intimidated by this new tool and they don't know really how to go about it and that's a good way to let them dip in their toes and say okay this is this is not something dangerous or to be afraid of I can use it and it can provide some good results to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm very bullish on custom GPTs. I just think that, um, you know, commercial real estate, um, I don't want to say has been neglected by the tech center, but or, uh, the tech industry, but, you know, it's, it's sometimes been hard for them to roll out tools that are, you know, very specific to commercial real estate. And part of that's our fault as an industry. It's like everyone wants things just kind of their specific way. It's like, even if you roll out a tool that it, uh, it's like, okay, this is a tool for brokerages. It's like, well, which brokerage? You know, the group that specializes in tenant rep or the, oh, sorry, my dog just started barking very loud. Um, you know, is it for the group that specializes in leasing or the group that specializes in sales? And then for the group that specializes in sales, is it for the group that special that does all sales or the group that does investment sales? And if it's for leasing, is it the group that does tenant rep or landlord rep? because everyone wants very, very specific configurations. And so that that's why I love the idea of custom GPTs because it's like, you don't have to wait for someone to build something for you that's gonna do something helpful using AI. You know, If you've found a way to do it through AI, you can build one of these with very similar instructions to the prompt that you were giving, and you'll be able to roll that use case out to your team you know, very quickly and effectively. I wanted to ask you, because Warren had mentioned that you shared a variety of tools at this conference that you were at. And so in addition to ChatGPT, what are your favorite AI tools? That's a great question. I always write tweets about this. And then when people ask me, I forget which ones they are. But, um, you know, you can probably, <laughs> you, could, you could say- There's so many good ones. You could say I vote with my dollars, right? You know, so that, that one's, uh, that, okay. that's very simple to, uh, you know, base it off of. So- I use ChatGPT Teams uh, so that I can use it with myself and my virtual assistant. You know, we have a handful of GPTs that, you know, I've created that, again, they, they she's not necessarily a ChatGPT expert, but I was able to record a video saying, hey, you know, here's a custom GPT with a bunch of social media posts, um, you know, baked into the back end. I'm going to send you photos and tell you what's going on in the photo you're going to put that into the custom GPT. And then based on different social media posts that we've done before, it's going to write a caption for us, you know, that's very similar to the kind of style and the branding that we would have used previously. So I love, you know, um, chat GPT teams because it makes it very simple and effective to, you know, work with not just myself, but have a workspace that my VA can work out of as well. Um, similarly, you know, long form video content, I'm sure you guys uh, play with tools like this. There's a fantastic tool called Opus Pro, 
that, you know, if you guys record a long form video podcast, you can take that, upload it to Opus Pro, and it's immediately going to slice and dice it. Yeah. Into like, you know, 10 different short form video clips that you can then, you know, take and use to promote on TikTok and Instagram. Um, and so I think that's a great use case as well, you know, just for almost anyone in commercial real estate brokers specifically, it's like, they'll put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into a really well-written market report. And then it's like, okay, you share it once on LinkedIn and it's over. It's like, that should just be the start. You know, like you took so much time to create this long form video or, you know, this long form market report, you can load that market report into chat GPT and say, Hey, please write me, you know, 10 tweets about this in the style of the uh, you know tweets that I've previously uploaded uh, to this custom GPT and it'll do that for you. Same thing with Opus Pro, you know, instead of just posting one time, hey, here's a link to the podcast, you can take that podcast and chop it up into a bunch of different social media content that you can use. Um, so those are two good ones. I love perplexity. It's just fantastic. I've really started using that a lot more lately. Um, there's Adobe Podcast, which I haven't tried yet, but if you're someone who just records a lot of, uh, you know, kind of videos on the fly and you want to remove background noise from that video and you don't have a really good microphone, you can just upload it to Adobe Podcast and, uh, and it'll do that for you. I've only tried it once, but it worked very, very well, so well that I had a, a paid subscription to another tool that I ended up canceling. Um, Gamma is a fantastic tool for creating brochures, for creating presentations. Uh, Warren, I know you, you saw this at uh, the presentation that I put on, but you know that same uh, brochure copy that we wrote using Real Estate Writer Pro, you can literally copy and paste that into Gamma and it's going to design an entire brochure for you for that property from top to bottom. Um, so that's a fantastic tool. Um, then personally, me for presentations, I use a tool called Beautiful AI. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of different tools out there for kind of AI generated presentation tools at this point, but Beautiful AI is just my favorite. You know, you can tell I don't want to slide about this. It's, you know, it's not going to do all the work for you, but it's going to make a really, really good looking slide with beautiful formatting, beautiful images, and it's going to do it for you really quickly. I, you, you also mentioned one of our favorites, which is Mid, Mid Journey. Uh, yes. It, and <laughs> in in your presentation at CREI. And in fact, I was tinkering with it this morning because I've got a client that I'm developing a website uh, for and they're a land broker. And so I was creating some uh, aerial photography of some land plots. And so I'm going to create uh, with the new tool. They've got an editing uh, tool in it now where you can take an image and put it in there and then you can do some editing to it. So what I'm going to do is create this land, put a, uh, a structure on it, a mixed use development or a multifamily development and just have that grow and create an animation and throw it into uh, wow. runway possibly. Runway, yeah. And That's then a have, it, tool. have it grow grow that development out of the ground so that we can use that as like a hero video on their website. That's Warren has done so many idea. things with Mid Journey and Runway. It's incredible. <laughs> Warren, you're you're gonna have to show me how to do that because and, and this is something I love, but I think a lot of people um, get scared of with AI. It's just moving so fast. You know, I think um, maybe. <laughs> oh, God, well, yes, it is. <laughs> like right before I gave that presentation at CREI, I don't even think I've had time to release it, but I recorded like a 20 minute video on you know, how to take a property image uh, and then recreate it in mid journey so that then you can edit it in mid journey because at the time you couldn't really edit photos, All right. but you could edit images that it recreated, you know? So if you could effectively Fantastic. recreate a property, you could kind of reimagine that property, but it sounds like you're telling me now you can just upload a photo and go. Is that right? Uh, I haven't, we haven't tried the tool. That's what we were going to, uh, do in our mid journey Monday segment that we do today. Uh, but we have, I have used mid journey consistently to create properties, uh, fictitious properties. I think I showed you my luxury resort in on a tropical Island 
And uh, so I, I've got to I've got to take that investment opportunity and make it into some video and some other things and and retry some of those prompts. But yeah. you're you're totally right, and I and I would love to have another conversation about about that specifically. Uh, but to wrap up, I, I know we're running on uh, some tight time here. We've talked for about thirty minutes or so. I can't I believe it's over. I feel what, like we're just getting started. I know. <laughs> I I know. I know. But this topic is so broad, and you know, we can always talk about it again. But I would love to know your thoughts of what you see in the future for AI and AI in the real estate market. Yeah. So I think right now it's at a point where it's just, it's hyper accessible for, you know, people who are very spread thin and just don't have enough time to get a lot more done much faster and have more time. You know, like, again, it's kind of right now, the most value that's out there for, you know, people uh, who want to use AI tools is for people that honestly like don't even have a team. You know, it's like maybe you're a solopreneur or you're a solo broker and you don't have a lot of people that you can delegate tasks to. It's like you can use a handful of these tools to, again, write your property description, draft your brochure using Gamma, create a video about the, bro about the uh, property using NVIDIA AI. We didn't even get to talk about that one. Um, and you can do all of that extremely quickly. I, I think what I'm most excited about is two prong, you know, the custom GPTs for that same reason, because it just enables people to be able to use those tools to do even more, you know, to execute those kind of monotonous tasks really, really quickly and be able to roll them out to your team because you don't need them to necessarily be an AI wizard to be able to use them. Um, but then the final thing is just kind of, you know, like the bigger AI use cases, like, hey, when is this actually going to start making a substantial impact on, you know, kind of the big picture commercial real estate topics? You know, so I think one is architecture and you kind of hit on that with the concept of mid journey. You know, it's like if you're trying to do something on the fly you just want to be able to see, okay, what would this building look like if it was red? You know, what, what would this building look like if we made that wall glass or if we added, you know, some landscaping or, you know, a nice little atrium, you know, you can, you have to be good with it, but you can do that with mid journey. Um, I think what we're starting to see now is more companies get into the space of very quickly creating, you know, architectural renderings and you know just kind of reimagining properties very quickly and so i just think eventually we're going to get to a point where you can walk around a space and it's a vacant space and you know you can throw on a 3d headset and say oh okay we just uploaded this uh photo to mid journey now we're going to reimagine it and now you can kind of walk around the space and see what it could look like and you know, I, I don't That's know why amazing. that excites me so much. It doesn't seem to excite everybody. But just the fact that I've been on the landlord side, you have a vacant space, you're touring people through it. Maybe it's a, you know, it's a 1980s office space. It's old, it's yellow, it doesn't look good. And people walk through it. And it's like, ah, I can't visualize my business in here. I have no idea what this is going to look like. And the landlord's stuck thinking, okay, do we demo it? You know, do we bring it back to, you know, just kind of core and shell? Do we just do the carpet and ceiling? Do we build it out exactly how we think people will want it and hope for the best tenant? You know, I think this is get to going to get to a point where you just don't necessarily have to do it because you could walk through a vacant retail shop with a coffee shop owner and say, okay, you know, we're going to make this a coffee shop, throw on the headset, or at least for now, you know, look at my iPad. And, oh, okay, here's where your register could go. Here's where the people could sit down and enjoy a nice cup of coffee. And so it's going to remove the bottleneck that is lack of imagination from the space. You know, because when you're trying to find a potential tenant, you know, you're never going to be able to control for, you know, the success of their business, the demand for that kind of space or like the credit of that tenant. But you will be able to control for the variable that is lack of imagination. And it's not that tenants don't have imagination, but, you know, if you're walking through a space that just looks disgusting, it's hard to imagine, you know, how your business could actually look in that space, you know, but you'll, you'll start to be able to use some of those tools uh, to do that. And I think it's, I think it's coming quicker than we'd expect. Oh yeah. Oh, 
for sure, for sure. And, and I like what you said, that, that lack of imagination and, and, and how you said, you know, it's not really lack of imagination. They don't lack the imagination. But when you're impacting by the sight that you're seeing right there, it's hard to visualize what that may or could be. And uh, especially if you're like, oh, that was a cockroach that scurried by or something like that. <laughs> you're like, uh, it's hard to imagine when you're a, a little on the anxious side. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, I'd say the other big thing that, um, you know, I think is coming. I haven't necessarily seen anyone do anything monumental with this yet. But just kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier, like the the data science side. You know, I think everyone is very interested in that. It's like, how do we use AI to take in all of our data and analyze it? You know, tell me, you know, what's going to happen with rental rates in this market or, you know, what's going to happen with demand for this specific building? And, you know, like the fact is, like, you could use AI for that, you know, through data science before ChatGPT. Like that, there's already a field of people who can do that. But just again, there's not a lot of those people specifically in commercial real estate, let alone at, you know, kind of mid-level and smaller shops. So, you know, I think we're going to see a lot of things that kind of bridge the gap between chatbots and buttons because people are getting used to chatbots, but everyone's really used to clicking a button and the data science side of things, you know, kind of running those different, uh, you know, I don't, can't think of what to call them right off the bat, but, you know, um, analysis platforms like R and Python code to, you know, look at a bunch of data and, you know, extrapolate insights from it using different kinds of models. I think what we're going to see is a, a technology that kind of bridges the gap and makes it easier to use the way that ChatGPT kind of made it easy for everybody to use LLMs. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but just based on the demand for it, uh, I think that's coming. That's fantastic. I, those are great insights, and I, I think you're totally spot on with many of those ideas that you see in the future. Uh, any closing thoughts, uh, Jacob? No, I mean, I just, one of the things that I, I like that you pointed out, um, it's always fun when a guest has a phrase that sticks out in my mind. So you mentioned this lack of imagination. We cl kind of clarified that, is that AI can help you visualize, right? It doesn't do everything for you but it helps you visualize where things could go. And uh, it's amazing. We wanna thank you, Toe, for the, the tools you've shared. I Every time we do this, I take note of a couple of tools <laughs> that, uh, that the people tell us about. Uh, so I'm, I've got a tab open for beautiful AI. Um, and so it's just really great to learn more about artificial intelligence and meet people who are excited about it as well. If you are interested in this channel, if you learned from this interview, feel free to subscribe. I want to make sure that you follow Topher. Uh, he's on LinkedIn and his he's with Aspire, correct? Is that where you're at now? Aspire Commercial. And you can find me on Twitter at Topher now. Excellent. Thank you again for coming. And we look forward to seeing you around here on our channel at Tingenuity AI.